Amen. Hello, everybody. This is Sunday Adelaide here. Plutonic, you are number one today. Rochelle White. Aza. Well, nice to see all of you. Gide. <laughs> Gide, wow, what a time we had today. That was revolutionary, eh? Tuli. Samuel. Abayomi. Oh, that's our. Is it senator or congressman? Ola BC. Abidemi. Oh, wow. I lost it, I guess. Okay. Anyway, welcome, everyone. Welcome, everybody. Uh, please go ahead and invite your friends. Go ahead and invite your colleagues. Go ahead and thank your relatives. And I'm uh, glad to see you. And happy that you, are, you all came here today. And we are going to continue our series on love. But not really love. Love is the instrument of knowing God. So the whole thing is actually knowing and understanding God through love. Knowing and understanding God through love. Now, the bottom line of Christian faith is that we get to know our Father. That's why Jesus came to introduce us back to the Father. One of the most important tasks or mission of Jesus Christ on earth is to introduce the children back to their father. That's why the Bible says, the last phrase in the Old Testament actually says in Malachi that a time is coming that God is going to send his messenger, which is Jesus, or his son, that will introduce us back to, the, the, introduce the father back to the sons and the sons back to the, to, the, to the father. So the bottom line is that Christianity, at the heart of Christianity, is relationship, relationship, relationship between children and father, relationship between father and children, relationship between sons and father. So Christianity is about relationship. That's why the work, the thing that ended the New Te Old Testament is the promise that God is going to introduce, is going to send a, a son or his, his servant that will reconcile humanity back to their father. God is interested in reconciliation. So this whole mission about believing in God is that sons that have gone astray, like in the story of the prodigal son, that sons will come back to home to get re to be reconciled to their daddy. So God doesn't, doesn't just want to stay up there in heaven and far away from us, and we just praying to him, and we are just afraid of him, and we, 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 we are just a timid before him. That's not what God wants. What God wants is a relationship whereby uh, children are running back home. I think we have a, a guy there. Hello, please come. You run here to me like a son we do to a father. So that's what God wants. He wants a situation whereby a son is running back home and hugging the father. This is the, fa the kind of relationship that God is looking forward to. A relationship between father and son. Not God in heaven. And not, you know, do as if God is in heaven. No, 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 no. Don't act like that with God. God is not far from you. God is not somewhere far in thousands of miles away. No, no. He sent Jesus to introduce us to another kind of relationship. To another kind of attitude towards God. Not the God that is far. Not the God that you are timid to approach. Not the God that you are running away from. Not the God that is sending fear to you. And that is holding a stick trying to knock you in the head for everything you have done wrong. No. Jesus brought a new concept of God. A God that wants and desires relationship with you. 
A God that wants to embrace you. A God that wants to get to know you. A God that wants you to know him. A God that wants to reach out to you in love and in acceptance. No matter what you have done. No matter how, mis how miserable you are. No matter how much inferiority complex you got. This God, he wants to prove to you that he is your daddy. He is your father. He is so much interested in you. He, he so much loves you. He, it's all about knowing him. He made Jesus to introduce to us this new kind of relationship. That's why Jesus was always talking about himself as son, 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 son. This is not just to talk about himself. This is to show us an example. He was using himself as the model. He was using himself as the standard. He was using himself as the prototype. That you see, I am a son of God. You too are children of God. Begin to relate to your father like son to father, like father to son. That is why the only prayer that Jesus ever taught us to pray, to us like that, our father, our Father, who art in heaven, our Father, our Father, who is no more far from you. We are no more far from him. The sacrifice of Christ has brought the Father close to us. We are no more looking for him. We are at home. We are not looking to die before we could go to heaven. No, heaven has come to us. He says, don't you know that the kingdom of God is in you. The Father is in me. I don't need to go to church to find him. I don't need a building to find him. He is inside of me. My body has become the building of God Almighty. I am now the temple of God, Jehovah. He is in me. He is with me. Oh, I am surrounded by him. I am surrounding my son. My father is surrounded me. I am hidden inside my father. Abba Oshe, Abba Father, Abba Father. He said he has sent unto us the spirit of sons by which we cry, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father. That is why Christianity was introduced. So that we will be taught relationship. Christianity is not about religion. Christianity is about getting. It's a system that will bring you into cordial relationship. Into intimate relationship with God. So everything Christianity must be about getting to know the Father. Helping people to know the Father. Everything in Christianity must be set up in such a way that... You get to know God as your father. That you get to understand God as your father. Not looking for him because he's not lost. He is inside of you. He is not far from you. But he wants you to change your attitude. Don't just look at him as some God over there. But look at him. Look into his face as a father to his son. And as a son to his father. So even though we are talking about love this way and this whole season, but really what we are talking about is knowing and understanding God through love. Through love for God, through love for man, through love to God and through love to man. That's what it's all about. Understanding God, knowing God is your father. You know, when you look at Jesus, Jesus said, I am my father. I want. If you have seen me, you have seen my father. If you know me, you know my father. You don't need to. They say, oh, show us the father. That's enough. Mm -hmm. No, no, he's not last. Mm -hmm. The father is here. Mm -hmm. That's how he wants you to relate to the father. So that you will identify with the father. Mm -hmm. Most Christians don't identify with the father. They identify him as God somewhere. They're God. Mm -hmm. But he Jesus brought at us an example. No, it's not God somewhere there. Mm. It's my father. Mm. I am my father. I want mm. right now. I, Sunday at Elijah, mm. I always tell people whenever you want to see God, see me. God, when you see me, you see God. Why? 
because I am my father, I want him. He is my father. I am one with him. I am to one in him. I am one in him and with him. I am the same as my father. And my father is the same as me. He is in me. He is inside me. He is inside of me. I am inside of him. He said in those days, you will know that you are in me and I am in you. He is my father. Get to that place where you will identify God, not just as God somewhere, but as your father. So that's why we are doing this whole thing. So that we will not just be talking empty talk, but so that we will get to know him. That is what makes it easier for you to know that you are one with him through knowledge. That's why I'm teaching all this series on love. By the time you know the way he behaves, by the time you know the way he acts, by the time you know his character, by the time you know why he is like that, what he expects from you, by the time you know the action, you know, the way, he, you know, his feelings, by the time you begin to have the same feeling as, the, as him, by the time you begin to behave like him, by the time you become, you, you, you just discover that you are becoming one with him and you are becoming cemented with God, one with God. And that should be the ultimate goal of each and every one of us, to know God, to understand him so well that you become just one with him. Thank you, sir. Maybe you will see, we'll see me you today. I don't know, but we'll see. So knowing and understanding God through love. But the topic of today, the topic of today specifically is why we can't or why we cannot really love others. What, because to love God, we need to love others. So what is the problem? What, what really, what, what are the factors that are inhibiting us from loving others because you cannot say you love God without loving others because the Bible says that you cannot say you love uh, God without loving your brethren without loving the others without loving your neighbor so the only way to love God is to love your neighbor so what is disturbing us what is inhibiting us from knowing God one of the factors why we cannot really get to know God is because we don't know people we don't get to know people and you cannot know God without knowing people one of the reasons why we don't get to really understand God is because we don't seek to understand people. And there is no way you ever get to know God without understanding people. If you want to know God, begin to listen to people. Begin to hear people. Begin to study people. Begin to watch out for people. Begin to look out for people. Because if you get to know people, if you will seek to understand that know people, you will get to know God. You want to understand God? If you want to really understand God, begin to listen to people. Begin to seek and pay the price of knowing people. You know why? Because God is in people. If you could pay the price to know people, if you will pay the price to understand people, if you will really let lower yourself and humble yourself and do everything necessary for you to know people and to understand them, to understand their pain, to understand their no joy, their happiness, to understand their deprivations, to understand the reason for their for their sadness, for their happiness, for why they behave the way they behave, for their attitude, for their reactions, and what makes them tick. If you will pay the price of patience with people, and you will be so kind enough to love people, if you will be kind enough to understand people, to know people, you will begin to discover one thing. You begin to discover that really God is in people. And when you take your time to understand people, you begin to understand God. Because people carry God inside them. People carry the image of God in them. And because God is in people, when you take time to know people, you get to know God. Because God is in people, when you take time to understand people, you begin to understand God. So this is what I'm talking about today. Why we can't or the love others. Why is it that we can't love people? Why is it we have it difficult? Why is it difficult for us to love people? Why we cannot really love people? Why we cannot love others? And you know, you can't, if you don't love others, you don't love God. God says that there is no way you will love people, I mean, you will love God without loving others. Because if you cannot love the people that you see, there is no way you will love the God that you don't see. So let's Go into that even into more details. Okay, so you remember 
the, the, the only problem for people, for all of us, is that we, we, if we cannot love people, it is only because we have a love problem. You remember this phrase we always read? All problems in the world is a love problem. Either loving yourself too much, when you love yourself too much, then you cannot love others. Or, we can, or not loving others as yourself. If you, can't, if you don't want to love others as yourself, then that's why you cannot love others. Or loving others too much. If you love others, if you love others too much, then there will be someone else that you will not love. And then a misdirected love also will not make you to love others. And a misdirected love is loving the wrong things. When you love things, then you don't love people as much. When you love self too much, then you don't love people as much. When you love other things, then you don't love people as yourself. So instead of loving God and loving others, when we love other things, then all problems come from there. So why is it that we cannot really love people? We, don't, we cannot love others. Why is it that we cannot love others? We cannot love others just because we are too much in love with ourselves or we are loving the wrong things or we don't know love. So, but the old idea of loving God is not possible without loving people. When people talk, one of the ways to love people is to learn to listen to people. When people talk, we don't respect their views. Another way to really love people is to learn to make to know that if I cannot listen to people, I cannot listen to God. There is no way I can hear God if I don't learn to hear people. If I don't have the patience to hear people, to understand people, then I can never have the patience to understand God. So one of the ways to show love to people is the ability to listen to them, to hear them out. Because if you don't have that patience to listen to people, there is no way you listen to God. So when you say, some, a lot of people tell me that they, pastors don't have time for them. They cannot meet their pastors. They cannot get to see their pastor. They cannot get to get an appointment. They have protocol. If a pastor is not having time, it doesn't make himself available to hear people, it, that pastor is not hearing God. If there is no way for you to hear God when you cannot hear man. If the pastor doesn't make himself available to listen to people, that pastor just know that that pastor doesn't hear God. He doesn't listen to God. Because it takes more effort to be able to listen to God than listening to people. And the way for you to train yourself to listen to God is by listening to people first. The way to train yourself to hear God is by, first of all, hearing people out. So one of the ways, one of the reasons, or one of the ways why we cannot really love others, one of the ways to really love others is to listen to them talk, is to learn to listen to them. Number two, another way we could listen to, we could love others is to respect their views. Even if they have wrong views or wrong opinions, even if they are wrong, the ability to just listen to even that wrong opinion is a way of loving them. Even when they are talking rubbish, but your own ability to just humble yourself and listen to the so-called rubbish that they are saying is doing something in your psyche because you are receiving them as human beings. You are receiving them as image and likeness of God because you are receiving them like God's image and you are listening to them. Something is dying in you. The flesh is dying in you. The, the human inhibitions are dying in you. And because you are able to listen to somebody that is not so respectable, somebody that is not so deserving, but who carries the image of God nevertheless, that is doing something between your connection with God. God is saying, okay, if you could listen, if you could sit back and hear out somebody that is not deserving, if you could honor somebody that you think is not deserving of your time, of your respect, just for you to go out to listen to them, you position yourself for God to honor you. 
You, be, you, you position yourself for God to begin to respect you. You position yourself for God to begin to hear you out, just like you have heard that other person out. So one of the ways to begin to love people, one of the ways to really love people is to learn to listen to them. And another way to love people is to respect their opinion, even if their opinion is wrong. And that is why, I mean, that is what the freedom of speech in the West is based on. It's based on love. The ability to let everybody express their opinion is an act of love. But when you go to an African church, for example, they tell you that you are too small. Who are you to talk when Gio is here? Who are you to talk when the pastors are talking? Who are you to talk when you are not a pastor? You don't have an opinion. You, don't, you cannot express your opinion. But, listen, that is not God. This kind of thing should not be in the church. Yeah, I understand that in the culture, in the African culture, you cannot talk. You are nobody because you and elders are here. And when elders are there, the junior ones cannot talk. You are not human because the fathers are here, right? But in, not in the church of God. That kind of habit should not be in the church of God. That kind of practice should not be in the church of God. Because the very ability, the very mm, possibility of you listening to somebody that is not deserving, somebody that is lower than you, that very act of, you know, is, is an, is an act of humility for you who is deserving, you who is a big pastor, you who is a you know, father or daddy or geo. When you are able to go down low to the level of ordinary members and you are actually listening to them and you are actually exercising patience with them, that is how you manifest the God kind of love. That is how you manifest God's nature. That is how God's nature is. So it is only when we are able to celebrate people that are undeserving of it, that is when we manifest God's love. So when you have a church where you say people cannot talk just because they are nobodies or they are just ordinary members, their opinions are not regarded and their, you know, their views are not heard, that is not the kingdom of God. But in, rather, in the kingdom of God, you actually want them to listen. Because there is a scripture there in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Please look for it for me. Where it says that it is the lower members of the body, the weaker members, the members that are not honorable, that don't look so honorable. They are the ones that should be shown more honor. More honor, more honor must be paid, must be given to those people in the church that are looking as if they are the weakest. To those people in the church that don't look so honorable. To those people in the church that look at them. That is how love is manifested. That is how God himself will behave. He will rather pass by the mighty and the strong and go to the weak. So that's what, that is how the kingdom of God works. Because that is what made God, Jesus, to live the kingdom of our God. Jesus is the almighty. He's the strongest. But he left heaven and submitted himself and humbled himself to come to us who are nobody, fallen humans, sinners, corrupt nature, he took upon him. He, he took our nature upon himself. He put in him, on himself our nature, our sinful nature. He became like man. That is how love is manifested. Love is not when you are just among the strong and the mighty like yourself. Love is your ability to come down, to descend from your high horse, to descend from your high hill. And honor people who are not deserving, people who look who people look down on. When you honor them, when you go down to their level, that is what love is. So in this kingdom, the way you will be able to love others is to be able to listen to them, learn to listen to people, especially people who are lower than you. That way you are loving, you are, you are manifesting the nature of God. And that way you are getting to know God. When you love that way, then you know God. You get to know God and you get to understand God. Number two, or, or, always respect other people's opinions. Always respect other people's opinions. And then look for another scripture. Have you found it? It's so easy. No, no, make no slabbing, no shlene, washe. No, Pedro Corinthians, uh, Chetonas, the Lord. First Corinthians 14. 
or is it it's 12? I think it's 12 or 14. I think it's 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Just look into the chapter, it's half of it is all about, all about that. So, it's 14, chapter 14, 1 Corinthians. Just go in there and look, read to, towards the lower part of it from the middle. <laughs> and, and then yeah, another uh, scripture you should look for is uh, uh, when you say, how can you love the person that you don't see? And, uh, you know, you see, how can you love the God that you don't see when you, 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 you don't love the person that you see? First Corinthians, First John chapter 4. That is First John now. So anyway, uh, so the so the second way to really love people is uh, is to honor their opinion, honor their opinion. Or oh, is it is it not chapter fourteen, First Corinthians? If it's not First Corinthians chapter fourteen, then it should be chapter twelve. You got it. So when people talk. We should respect their views. That is the second way to really love people. So why we don't respect people? Why we don't? Why we cannot love people? Why we cannot really love others? We cannot love others because when people we don't listen to people when they talk. We don't take our time, especially when they are lower than us. We don't respect their views. So the second reason that the second way. So for you to really love people, learn to listen to them. Number two. For you to really love people, learn to respect their views. Learn to respect their views. Then number three, it says we only take our opinions as final. That's number three. For you to really love people, for you to really love people, don't assume that your opinion is always the right one or always the final. Don't assume that your opinion is always the final. You found it? Yeah, please go and show it to me. Don't assume that your opinion is always the final. When don't don't just when you know. So always, and uh, uh, you know when we take our opinion as the final, we are not showing love. So there are three things I've just told you right here for 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 you to learn to love people. Number one, or learn to listen to others. That's where you are showing love. Number two, always respect other people's opinion. Know that other people also have something to say. Some, you know, when you are a pastor, I don't know who has has any one of you listened to me when I preach in my church in the Russian language. When I preach in the Russian church, I always do. I don't assume when I preach in church. I don't just assume that I am the only one that has something to say. So when I finish preaching, I do my own side of the preaching. After the service, I always stand beside and call people from the auditorium to come forward and express and distribute and contribute and discuss what I've just what I've just preached on. So I don't just assume that I'm the only one who's right and that I am, you know, I, you know, because I've preached, I close my Bible and I go as if I am the almighty God, I must be right. No, I invite people to come from the auditorium. Not just to come with their questions, no, but to actually tell me their understanding of that scripture that I read, their own interpretation of those passages that I've just brought to them, their understanding of the message. They come to judge the message. They come to the stage. I give them my microphone. Not to testify, but to comment, to judge, to discuss, to deliberate on my messages. That is what I do. And that's because that's one of the ways to show love to people. So there are three things I've said so far. One of the ways to show love to people is to listen to them. Secondly, recognize that people have their own opinion. Let them hear it. So when you, order, when you allow people to hear their opinion, you are actually demonstrating love to them. Number three, don't assume that your point of view is always the final. Don't assume that if once you have spoken, it is the final. If you belong to a church, we are only what the pastor says is the final. Run for your life. Because there is no love in that church. There is no love in any society where they don't hear your opinion. There is no love in any society or any church where they don't want to hear you or they don't want to recognize your own views. And then when there is no love in any society where they just make the 
uh, opinion on one person or a few people to be the final. So, so those are some of the ways for you to actually demonstrate love to other people. You demonstrate love by listening to people. And by listening to people, you learn to listen to God. By hearing people out, you could hear God as well. You cannot love God without loving people. You cannot hear God without hearing people. You cannot listen to God without listening to people. So, learn to listen to people. That's one of the ways to love other people. Number two, always recognize that other people also have their opinion. So, when you recognize other people's viewpoint or opinion, that is also a way of recognizing them, of loving them. When you celebrate other people's opinion. Even if they are wrong, give them the right to express that they are wrong opinion. And number three, don't dominate other people with your own position. Don't use your own opinion or your own viewpoint to dominate and to, to crush other people's opinion. So let the other people know that your opinion is not the final. And, and, uh, and, and uh, it is only the greatest argument that wins the day. It is only the best argument that wins the day. Not the the opinion of the pastor that wins the day, that carries the day. No. If you have a better opinion, look, look, tell, tell my, if you talk to my team members here, they will tell you, I always, you know, I come up with an idea, but I must listen to the idea and the opinion of, of other people as well, so that, you know, you know, I might be wrong. If they have a better opinion, we take that one. We take that one. So that's how you show love as well. That's how you show love. First John 4, 20 says, if anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For if a person does not love his brother, whom he has seen, then he cannot love God, whom he has not seen. So the, the only way for you to love God is by loving people. The only way for you to hear God is by hearing people. The only, people for you, the only way for you to listen to God is by listening to people. That is the only way. You must honor people. You cannot honor God without honoring people. The only way to honor God is by honoring people. 1 Corinthians 12, 21 to 26 says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. So there is no way, even if I am the GO of the church and the most important person in the church, even as the GO, I cannot tell somebody that his opinion is not important. I cannot tell somebody that I don't want to hear other people's opinion. No, everyone is important in the church. And I, even if you are the I, you are the one, you think you are the most important one? If the I cannot say to the, and the even the I cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker, those ones that you think are the weaker, those members of the church that are the poorer or the poorest, those people that you think they are not the richest, those people who don't have cars, those people who don't have the big, no, the big uh, African dress, the weaker members of the church are the most indispensable, are the most needful, are the most honorable. They are the ones to be mostly highly respected in the church. And the parts that we think are less honorable, you know, people that you, th so to say that some people are not important, you don't hear their opinion, people shouldn't talk, they shouldn't express their opinion because the GO has spoken. Who are you when the GO is here? Who are you when the pastors have spoken? Who are you? What can you say? You don't have an opinion, you shouldn't say anything. That is against the nature of God. That is against the nature of the Bible. That's against the injunction of the word of God. It's against the injunction and the, the position of the Bible. He says, on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are the less honorable, we treat with special honor. So it is the poorest, the weakest in the church that must be respected the most. Not the richest, not the powerful, not the pastors, not the leaders, but the ones that we think are weaker are weakest, are the ones to be respected the most. They must be given special honor. And the part that are unpresentable, you know, there are, people, there are some people in the church that are, that are regarded as unpresentable. 
those people that we say they are unpresentable are to be treated with special modesty. They are supposed to be treated with special honor. They are the ones to be treated with special honor. Why our presentable, the honorable part, need no special treatment. Those who are already powerful, those who are the pastors, the geos, they don't need special treatment. The pastors, the geo, the rich, they don't need to be treated specially. The ones that needed to be treated specially with special honor are the weaker, the less honorable, and the vulnerable people. That is why the tithe and offering should be meant for the vulnerable people. That's why the tithe and offering in the church must be given not to the pastor. The tithe and offering in the church must be given to the less honorable, to the less dignified members, to the, to the, to the weaker members, to the vulnerable members. That is why in the Acts of the Apostles, all the tithe and offering that they were gathering and all the money they were gathering in the Acts of the Apostles, they were not given to the pastors. The pastors didn't collect tithe and offering. In the Acts of the Apostles, in the Acts of the Apostles, the, the pastors didn't collect the money. The money was used for the less privileged people. The money was used for the underprivileged people. The money was used for the people who are, who are, who are the, weaker, the weakest people in the church. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor, greater honor to the parts that lacked it. The ones that lack honor are the ones the church is supposed to give greater honor to. So that there should be no division in the body. But that his part should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers. That is why the money was distributed among everybody in the Acts of the Apostles. So that there was nobody in need. The purpose of the church is that there will be nobody in need. But today is the opposite. It is the rich that keeps on getting richer. They will even tell you to sow up, sow up, give to the ones that are already honorable. The exact opposite of the Bible. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. So it is the weaker people that must be honored. First John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out okay okay we'll do this later let's look have a video let's have a look at a video here that might be able to help us so three things we had you know the people that deserve to be listened to to be heard of mostly are the people who are the weakest who are the less honorable the ordinary members are supposed to be more respected than the, and to be more honored than the big members the pastors the leaders but right now in the churches in africa we see the opposite and that is not a manifestation of love. And that's why we don't have love in Africa. So why we don't love people? Because we think they are small. Why we can't love people? Because we think they are, they are weak. We think they are nobody. That's why we cannot love people. And because we are not listening to the word of God, that we, we must actually give more honor uh, and give more respect to the poor, to the weaker, to the vulnerable, to the less privileged. Those are the people to be celebrated more in our churches, not the opposite. Let's have a look at the importance of listening to others so one of the ways to, for you to love others is to listen to them one of the ways for you to love others is to respect their to know that they have their own right to their own views and one of the ways another way that for you to love others is for you not to be dominant with your own opinion but uh you express your opinion and give others the opportunity and the benefit of it out to also let's express their own opinion let's have a look here Okay, let's 
start all over again without the sound. The importance of listening. Let's stop it here. Let's hear this. The richness of life doesn't lie in the loudness. Nada bullshit. The richness of life doesn't lie in the loudness and the beat, but in the timbers and the variations that you can discern if you simply pay attention. Is it done, eh? mm -hmm. The richness of life is in listening. The richness of life is in listening. When you pay attention, you get rich. And you get variations of life. And that is what that film is all about that we just saw. So that life teaches us better when we are able to stop and listen. That is why you cannot listen to man. We cannot listen to God if you don't listen to man. And we cannot hear God if we don't learn to hear man. So why is it that why is it why that we cannot really love others? Well, I already said because of love, our misplaced love. We love ourselves too much. And also because we don't listen to people. And listening is one of the ways to love others. Listening is one of the ways to love others. So, when people talk, why is it that we cannot love others? When people talk, we don't respect their views. We only take our opinion as the final. That's why we cannot really love others. But if anyone says, I love God, and his, his brother is a liar, so you can, it's not possible to love God without loving people. It's not possible to listen to God without listening to man. It's not possible not to learn to hear man, then you're going to hear God. It's not possible. First John, why is it that we can't love others? Another reason why we cannot love others is because of what is here. Because of fear. Sometimes, for some reason, we think sometimes that to love others is to make yourself vulnerable. Yeah? Let's face it. Why is it that we cannot love others? Because we think that it's weakness to love others. Because we think that to love others is to make yourself open, to make yourself weak. So everybody wants to sit tight. Everybody wants to close up. Everybody wants to hide something. Because you say, oh, I, you want me to just open up like that? If I open up like that, what about if they hurt me? If I open up like that, what about if they misuse, they abuse me, they use me? Because we think that loving is being weak. Or loving is exposing yourself. Or loving is being, is being vulnerable. But the Bible says it's the opposite. Love protects you rather. Love doesn't make you weak. Love will make you strong. Love doesn't make you vulnerable. Love will make you better. So, so, unfortunately, why is it that we cannot love others? Why is it that we cannot love people? We cannot love others because we are afraid. We cannot love others because we are afraid of being vulnerable. But So, let's see what the Bible says about being afraid. 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love. Ooh. Whenever you are afraid. Okay, for example. Can you come? I'm going to use an example here. For example, she is coming. Tatiana is coming. And I feel like hugging her. You know, before, I used to be afraid. That if I hug you, if I hug a lady like that, hold me, hold me. If I hug a lady like this in the camera, oh, I'm afraid. What would people think? The the whatever the uh, rumors or talk will be going to that. Oh, why is it hugging a, a woman, a lady like that? What, uh, fear, fear. That's exactly what it's saying. 
There is no fear in love. You see? There is no fear in love. There is no fear. Once you begin to have that fear, you don't have love. But that is our problem. We are thinking that if we try to love people, we are going to be vulnerable. For example, another example, uh, let's say, for example, one, one thing that surprised me in America when I went to America is that I'm in a small town, I, 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 I was going to that city for the first time and I checked in the hotel, but I always go out in the morning to pray. So at five o'clock in the morning, I went out of the hotel to pray and it was light between five to seven o'clock. So I, I saw some old men passing by there. Hi, hello. I said, ah, hi, hello. <laughs> Do you know me? Yeah, I'm here for the first time. They say, hi, I'm John. I'm John going to see my, my uh, daughter-in-law. She was taken to the hospital yesterday. Ah! <laughs> what business are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to, the, to see my... Uh, are you new in town? I said, yeah, I'm here for the first time. And you are telling me you are going to see your son, my daughter-in-law. And I'm, say, I'm saying, oh, oh. <laughs> we think that love makes you vulnerable. I'm thinking... How can, or oh, for example, in the airport, you see with an American, I say, Hi, where are you coming from? I'm from Seattle. Uh, well, I just went to Ukraine to sign. Are you in Ukraine? Yes. I just went there to sign a, a business contract. Where was with me? They're telling you all the things. <laughs> where we come from, you don't even talk to your family members about, the, you know, what happened to your daughter in law. You don't even talk to your church members about what happened to your, you know, daughter in, to, to your daughter in law. You don't even tell them where you are going. You tell the, you <laughs> even if they suspect that you are going to see your daughter in law, you tell them no, 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 I'm going to work. I'm going to the other side. Uh -huh. uh, and then to tell them that you are you've just come to sign a contract. Ah, nobody wants to. You want to, you want them the contract to not pass, not to, not to go through. <laughs> we are afraid, and anywhere there is fear like that, in a society where you cannot trust because of fear, because we think. That to love is to be vulnerable. But you know, it is the opposite. When I'm hiding everything, I don't trust you, I, that is when I'm vulnerable. That is when I'm weak. That fear makes you weak. But when I trust you, that trust, that love without fear is bringing you peace. Bringing me peace, bringing harmony, bringing trust. There is power in love. There is strength in love. There is energy in love. There is... So, for example, I was going to, you know, people tell me. You know what people tell me? People tell me, Pastor Sunday, don't, dis don't disclose your plans. You are going to Africa. Don't tell, no, Pastor, oh, Pastor Sunday. You cannot even imagine how many calls I'm receiving every day. People are telling me, Ah, Pastor Sunday, don't tell people what you are planning to do. Oh, that Nigerian Transformation Project, no! Don't, don't do that. Ah, you know, ah, you don't know African so, you don't know African so, all those African, ah, oh, ah, oh, they will not allow you to do it, they will not allow you to... But they don't know what I know. They don't know what I know. I'm not afraid. Because I know something. I know the power of love. I know the power of love. Love trusted. Love believeth all things. Love beareth all things. Love endureth all things. There is no fear in love. When you walk in love, I don't care. Do your worst. I am protected. Because love itself is protection. When I walk in love, when I relate in love, you do what you want to do or it's your problem. Because I am walking according to the way God said we should walk. I am living by the standard of God. I am. It means God is going before me. God, I am releasing. When I walk in love, I am putting God ahead of me. And God is washing after me. God is, is got my back. 
God has got my back because I am acting by his word. And his word said, there is no fear in love. If you, that means if I'm a loving person, I'm not afraid what I'm going to think if I hug you. I'm not, I'm not afraid. That's why you have all these news about me in the newspaper. I mean, the internet, anything. Can, I don't care. Let them talk anything they want to think. I'm not afraid though because there is no fear in love. You know, like that man. I'm not afraid of telling you some things. Yes, there's a place of wisdom, yeah? There's a place when you know that somebody wants to hurt you, especially you don't, you don't go and exp exp expose yourself to them. But, you know, but don't be driven by that fear. Don't be driven by that, you know, something. You know, just be led by the Spirit. There are some things you don't need to say. There are some things you might need to say. But don't be driven by fear all the time. And that don't tell them that you are, your son is wet, you know. Don't tell them that, that your, your daughter got a boyfriend, though. No. Don't go and tell them that your, your, your son-in-law is you are expecting a you know, wife is pregnant, too. So don't go and do this. Don't be driven. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out all fear. If you are a man of love, you are not afraid of what the enemy will do to you. You see, it says here, there is no fear in love. It is because of this fear that we cannot love. You see, the, scripture, the passage of the why we cannot really love. You, know what? you want to know why we cannot love? Because of this. Because of this fear. There is no fear in love. Because we are afraid that if I tell them, if I open up, somebody is going to hurt me. If I tell what I'm really thinking, somebody is going to steal it. If I tell what I'm going to do, somebody is going to do something. If I do something, somebody is going against me. If I do this, somebody, that fear kills love. That fear is the opposite of love. But if you really want to be like God... If you really want to walk like God on the earth, if you really want the backing of God for you, if you really want to express the nature of God on the earth and, be, and, and, and display the likeness of God and reflect the image of God himself, you must trust, love without any you know, second thought. Without any second thought, there is no fear. You don't fear anything. You love without fear. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. You know what I what 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 my, some bishops yesterday I showed some some Nigerian pastors. In the end, I show a video of some Nigerian pastors praying for me. You know they used to come here a lot. And one of those, one, not one of the ones we saw yesterday, but some of other bishops in Nigeria, you know, when I told them that when, when they see me, they used to come here and see how I'm free with my members. I give my members, I, I find how we relate. And they say, Pastor, no, 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 no. Ah, you know, you are a Jew. They were they coming here to tell me that, Pastor, you know, you are a Jew. You are a Jew. You don't allow your members to just be coming to you like that. And then one, the one that surprised them most eh, was that it, just like they were praying for me yesterday, so at the end of the anniversary, all my pastors, my senior pastors, I have my team, all my pastors decided to pray for me, my junior pastors, so my assistants. So what I did, I went on my knees, I, so just like I did with them, I went on my knees and my pastors and my members prayed for me. They were praying for me. When the African bishops and pastors saw that, they said, Pastor, after that, they said, never allow any man to lay hands on you, especially people who are lower than you or people who are under you. How can you allow your members to lay hands on you, to touch you? Ah, no, you are the head, though. You are the head. They will never reach there. You are the head. Fear, you know, fear. They don't have trust. They don't believe. They don't trust. They don't trust. They have second thoughts. They are always having some second thought. But you see me, I'm free. Oh, some people say, oh, why should you let somebody sit in your place? Or stand with you and take up your microphone? They are having second thoughts. Second thought. That is not love. Love doesn't, it's not living by second thought. Oh, oh, it's not living by fear. Not always thinking, oh, what would they think? Oh, what about if they are planning something against me? Oh. For example, another thing I try to introduce to Nigerian pastors is that I told them that, look with the way I do church here in Ukraine. I have started over 2,000 churches from my church here in Ukraine. 2,000 churches. 2,700 churches we have started. And all of them are independent. 
We start a church. We pay you money for it to start that church. We pay you for one year to start your church. And then we say it's your ministry. And even from the day he's going, he's, he already knows it's his own ministry. We tell him, name the church anyhow you want to name it. Call it anything you want to call it. Get your own document, registration, your papers, your building. All of that is yours. And just leave them. And my pastors are saying, ah, that's not, they will run away. I say, let them run away. Their they say, ah, no, that's not possible in Nigeria. That's not possible in Nigeria. So that is why all the pastors who have come here to learn from me, the only pastor that has decided to do that and release his pastors is Samadiyemi. All the other ones, they are only saying, no, it's, it's our branch. It's our branch. It has to be, all the things have to be under them. It has to, even the ones that are doing a, uh, NGOs, they go to Nigeria to begin to do good works and associate, but they are doing it under the name of the church. It is still the church that is doing it. So, but I said, no, in Ukraine, yeah, it is not me. Nobody even remember my name. Everybody is just inspired to start their own ministries, but they, I don't have to be there. Every church is independent. Every NGO is independent. Everybody, each is the head of our own organization. Everybody is the head of their own organization. I, I am, I am just the one that taught them. I've shown them the way. They are the head. But in Nigeria, if you have an organization, you must say Pastor Sunday is the president, mm -hmm. and you are just the manager, and it's your own organization. No, they have to put their senior pastor everywhere. That is because of fear, because there is no love. Perfect love has our fear. There is no fear in love. They say, but pastor, what about if they run away with the church? It is their problem. You know what? In my church here, yeah, even, the more I set them free, the more they run away. Some of them run, some of them don't run. It's their problem. It's not my church. It's God's church. I cannot take responsibility for other people's behavior. I have trusted on my own side. I have trusted I have, you know, trusted. I have blessed them. I've done the way God will do. So, if they behave the way they want to behave, it is their, it's their own fear that is now driving them. It is their own lack of security that is now driving them. But me, I have believed God. I have, I know that God will always get my back. My back. God will always have my back. God will always protect me. I, as long as I'm walking out according to his truth, and as long as I am functioning by his leading and I'm committed to that, he's always got my back. I don't care what will happen. What about if all of them go? Let them go. It's not my problem, but I know I'm safe. Why? Because I'm safe in love. I am covered. I cover myself in that love attitude. The most important is that when all of them begin to go, I shouldn't revenge. I shouldn't get angry I, because if I begin to get angry and begin to accuse them and begin to point fingers, it means that I am, uh, I am not secure in love. I'm not secure. I don't trust that the power of love is able to secure me. I don't trust in the, in the power of, of the truth of the word of God. So that doubt will not allow the blessings to come. But when I really trust God, when I know that I'm doing according to his will, that I'm rested in him, that is principle itself will see me through. But when I begin to doubt and look back and say, ah, maybe if, maybe if, maybe if, then I cannot love people, then I still lose. So, why we cannot love people? One of the reasons why we cannot love people is because we fear. We fear something all the time. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, you see. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. You know, let me tell you another story here. Maybe this story will be interesting. You know, I told you that I made my first million in nine months, right? Now, <laughs> that is built on a lot of trust. The way it happened is, I was, there was, that was a time when there was baby boom in America, in Florida. And, but in Florida, for you to be able to you know, the idea was to use the principles that I've written in that book, uh, Money Won't Make You Rich, and, you know, in my other books on finances, that you buy some piece of land, and the way it is is that you put down 30%, 10 to 30% of the land, 
of the properties and the land that I was buying. So I was buying land. I started, I made my first million buying land in Florida. So I will, the land is costing 5,000, for example, 5,000. And I need to put down 10% uh, of that or 30% of that. So I put down 30% of that, right? But the rest of the money, I we take it in the bank. But I cannot go and take it in the bank because I don't have uh, credit card. No, credit, what do you call it? Credit history. History of credit history in America. And I don't have paper. I'm not having, I don't live in the land. So the only way to make that uh, 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 legal, the, the only to make, way to make it legal is to get somebody who has credit history and then to say we are co-owners. So I give him the original money, which is the 30%. She doesn't have money, but she has paper. So she can use that paper and her credit, it's credit, whatever, history, and go to the bank take money. and take 70, the bank pays for the rest. So we pay for 30%, the bank pays 70%. So that is how, so my own, so one, one, the money that I would have used here to just buy one in here in a cash economy, like in Africa or here, that $100,000, for example, I could use it, to, I, could, I just have to put it down one time. You have to pay 100%. But here, I didn't pay 100%. So where I could have paid 100%, I only pay 30%. Some place 20%, some place uh, 10%. So an amount that would have only be enough to, just to buy one property, I was able to buy 10. And the rest of the money was coming from the bank. So now, but all the documents and all the papers will be on you. Much trust. Oh, Much trust. So now, $100,000, we have been able to buy 10 properties. And that is... By the time it is with the money of the bank, is over $2 million. And then that $2 million, by the time it grows, and it was growing that time very fast. So it's going to be like three, five million dollars. And all that five million dollars will be in your name. Because you have the the paper, the credit history. I don't have it. So what do you do? You have to trust. But I service the debt. I service the, uh, the loan. I'm paying for the loan. So you know what happened? You know, people, it's risky, but that's why you have to trust people. So that's how we're able to make some money. Now, I did that with several people. And you know the way things are in life. Some people will perform, mm -hmm. but most people will not perform. Or most people will steal it. So... <laughs> Maybe I had five people like I did like that. Out of five people, maybe I had four people. After the thing has grown and you have paid all the debt, you just see people disappearing. disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, when they do that and they disappear, I don't lose. No, really. You think I lose. Yes, I lost that amount that they ran away with. But in God's eyes, I didn't lose. Because God is a God of truth. God knows the truth. And I, the most important thing is not what happened now. The most important thing is that I walk in the truth. I, my conscience and God witness to the truth. That I didn't deceive her. And I walk in the truth. We have an agreement. And the agreement we had, I abide in the truth. So as long as I abide in the truth and I abide in love, I will never lose. So all these people ran away with the money later on, after five, ten years. So, but some people got the bad, but you know, they just different kind of politics people pray. Because people are people. People are weak. But they don't know that principles are more important than money. She is looking at me because she knows that He's still like there up to now. Eh? <laughs> He's probably thinking, well, I'm still gullible. Yeah, maybe I'm gullible, but I would rather be gullible on the side of God. I would rather be gullible on the side of truth 
than be wise and be like the world and be like everybody else. It's better to be gullible but to know that God got your back than to be cunning or to be the one on the wrong side. Truth and love, if you can manage to walk in those two, people will be people, but you abide in love. Love never loses. So after those people ran away with all the investments and money and, and then they had all oh, the crash, the you know, the price crash and everything. People thought they won. Yes, I was in crisis, and then I couldn't because all that started because I cannot travel out of Ukraine. I have to be in Ukraine, and I cannot travel, so I cannot go and do the thing. So when you cannot travel, because I never knew the time would come, I would never be able to travel. So when I cannot travel. And you have my money, 100000 Then you begin to say, oh, my, I have a problem. Oh. I'm going to sell it. <laughs> oh, I have my mother is sick. Oh, uh, the crisis came. I cannot pay for my something, so I need to sell it. Oh, I have, the bank says I, I must do this. All kind of reasons begin to come. And you cannot travel out of Ukraine. So that's why, you know, those kind of things happen with people. But, so it's like you lose. But you can only lose temporarily when you walk in love and in trust. Only temporarily. Because at the end of the day, God will come out for you. So I always tell my wife and my members or my, my uh, people who are close to me that nobody can ever shake me. And nobody can ever steal wood from me. Because you took away $100,000 or you took away $1 million. But that one million dollars is like zero compared to what you could have gotten if you didn't deceive. Because I'm worth more than that. For you, one million dollars is a big money. And you go, but because you have done it and got it the wrong way, with the wrong principle, you will never be able to hold on to it with the wrong principle. You are going to lose it too. Other things are going to happen you know, crisis and catastrophe will take it from you. But if you had stayed together and be faithful, that $1 million maybe could become $10 million, $100 million if you are faithful just to this. Hmm. To the principle of trust and uh, truth and, and love. So receiving, uh, sometimes receiving $1 million, you become... Uh, poor. Yeah, you might not become poor immediately, but eventually, after some time, you be, you get it, but you you will you are really poor later on. Yes, you're poor. Yeah, because principles are richer than material things. Love is more powerful than all the money and wealth in this world. Truth is more powerful than all the riches and wealth in this world. Principle, the invisible things are always more powerful than the visible things. Because the visible things are all temporal. But the invisible things, they are everlasting. They are forever. Because, because you don't see, you know, principles. You see money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People don't see principles. Yeah, and it's also because it's not visible. It, they're not visible. Money is visible. Man, money is now, <laughs> here and now. So let me take money and let my principles wait. Mm, yeah, but they lose. They lose. Yeah, because the principle cannot stand for them. Because they have betrayed the principle, so the principle will not fight for them tomorrow. When they need the principle, they cannot lie on it. They cannot fall back on it. Mm -hmm. Because they have disposed it. They have thrown it away. So they, when they are drowning in the river, the principle is not there to catch them. But if you will lose today, to, uh, yes, tomorrow... Yes, if you lose today, but you are still standing on the principles. You are on solid ground. So, what, the reason I'm telling these stories is so that people will not be afraid of loving. Because people are always afraid of loving because they are afraid of disappointment. They are afraid of, you know, people misunderstanding them. They are afraid of people disappointing them. 
They are afraid of being to be vulnerable. They don't want to be vulnerable. Or maybe previous experience. Yeah, previous Same. experience also give them more fear. Yes. I don't want any more. Much pain. So much pain. No? So much pain. <laughs> yes, yes. So much pain. Yes. Yeah. But you cannot it's live true. your life without pain. So, but I would not allow the fear of what people will think or what people will say or the pain that will come from people or because they will make me vulnerable or they will uh, disappoint me or they will let me down. Don't let that, I will not allow that fear to stop me from loving. So the most important thing I'm trying to say is don't let the fear of pain, disappointment, previous experiences stop you from loving, from loving people. Don't let that fear stop you from loving people. It's better to pay any price for love and trust than to be, live in fear and live in doubt. It's, you know, just let the fear go. That's what I'm trying to say. Let the fear go. Let the doubt go. Yeah. I think the, this is the... Most precious lesson to let fear go, yeah. because people ruined by fear, yeah. living by fears, to to lose something. Can you can you get me the video of uh, the Asian guy that was taking somebody was jumping into the to commit all the people committing suicide, and the other one that is going to give people something every day, and. Uh, you know, give different people, some people he gave this, some people he had. No, no, also Asian. Yeah. So, yeah, fear, the fear, fear everywhere. stops us sometimes. Yeah. Fear everywhere. Fear of people. Fear of you know, people. even in Africa, some people say, don't give your money to the poor. <laughs> yeah, because they are afraid. Uh, they say, if you give the money to the poor, the poor will take the money and go and use uh, black magic, voodoo, and go and do voodoo on that money, and you will become poor, you will become rich. <laughs> some uh, some superstitious beliefs. So fear is stopping people from doing everything. Some people say, don't help your neighbor. Don't help your neighbor. Because if you help your neighbor, your neighbor will know you have money. <laughs> and then your neighbor will send uh, uh, arm robbers to your house to rob you because they know you have money fear so don't help your neighbor so that it doesn't become bad for you so fear stops you from loving don't give your money to the poor because they will use it and use black magic fear is stopping people from loving so why don't why don't we love people why is it that we cannot love people because of fear for example i see here in ukraine i see women carrying heavy bags can you, you have something? Bag? Any bag? Yeah, yeah. Big Take one. a bag. Bring that bag. So, let's say you have a heavy bag and you're trying to... No, no, not this way. Uh -huh. You try to take it in every, every bag, every bag. And, and I say, can I help you? No, 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 no. You are afraid. Yes, sometimes they do. Yeah. They are afraid because... And then I'm a black man. And I'm saying, hello, lady, can I help you? No, 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 no. They will run away from me. They run away from me. <laughs> but they don't know that, you know, that, that fear is what is helping us. Also, sometimes now, because many people have said, no, 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 no. Sometimes now in my mind, when I now want to help somebody, the fear will say, oh, they will run away from you again. But you see, that fear shouldn't stop me to say, can I help you? Always, over. Always, over and over. Because Jesus, they asked Jesus, how many times should I you know, forgive my brother? He said, over and over, as many times, 70 times times 7. If they refuse you, they don't want you to help them, do your best. Do what you need to do. Trust and, and help people. Okay, for example, in the West now, mm, a lot of men, they say, uh, I cannot give a hand to the, to the lady that, okay, Come out of the car, mm -hmm. or you know, remove the coat. You know, can you get the coat? Get the coat. Try to work back, back in. I said, I can't do it. 
So they, they say, I, so I said, let, let me help you remove your coat. No, no, no. <laughs> no, yeah. So they said the Western women, they said they are feminists. They said, no, 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 no. I myself, I do it myself. But that shouldn't stop me from offering to her. But if I if I if I have attempted to help you remove your coat or wear your coat many times, and all the ladies are saying, no, 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 then the men just say, Why is it that you don't give the girl a hand? Oh, here they say, uh, no, I don't need your help. But that doesn't mean you should stop being kind. So, rejection. Be but because of rejection, she is now afraid of being, you know, trying to offer his help. So, you are, you no, know, I am then allowing fear of rejection or lack of understanding. That fear of rejection is now making me not to love. So, so I am no more kind. I am no more uh, loving. attentive, loving, mm -hmm. because somebody rejected. So that's what I'm trying to say. Don't let the fear of the rejection or the past or anything that happened before stop you from showing love, from loving people. Many people have hurt me before. All the time people hurt me. But that should not stop me from... Keep, doing, keep, keep, keep on in, loving people. Keep on loving. Keep, keep on being myself. Keep on being my, the na myself nature. in the nature of God. Because when I, uh, when I uh, ruined by others' rejections, others fear my fears, I reject my nature. I like reject God, God's, God's nature. God's nature. Yeah. So by other words, I say that this fear stronger than love. It's strong. So we are allowing. Mm -hmm. We are making fear to be stronger than yes, love. Yes, this is. Horrible. This is horrible. And the fear of, of rejection, of last experiences, of pain, pain what of other loss. things. Yeah. So we are making our fear to be stronger than God's nature, the love in us. And that is why, so if we, the topic of today is why we cannot really love others, one, we cannot love others because we don't hear, we don't listen to them. We cannot love others because we don't e e respect their opinions. We cannot love others because we think my opinion is what is more important. We love ourselves too much. Then we cannot love others because we are afraid of the disappointment. We are afraid because of the last experience. We are afraid because of, you know, the pain that other people could bring us. So that's what this is all, all about. Uh, that scripture. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. And when you live in fear like that, you are not living by your nature. You are not living by God's nature. God's nature is for you to live by love. You are created to live by love. So when you live in fear, you are destroying your nature. Because fear involves torment. Fear it torments you. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So we sometimes think that others are only speaking what we needed to hear. Sometimes we think like that. That, okay, why cannot we listen to them? Why can't we love them? We think, ah, he's just talking something. He's just pretending, or he's not real, or he's just saying something so that I will be happy. He doesn't mean it. So we, we live in prepositions or in presumptions, assumptions. So our wrong assumptions is another reason why we cannot love people. We assume the wrong things about people. We always have some assumption or the other. And those assumptions are always wrong, sometimes wrong. So we don't need to live in people, living and relating to people in assumptions. We're just supposed to trust and love. Trust and love. So these assumptions about people make us to not to be able to love them, not to trust them, and when we don't trust them, we don't love them. Sometimes we say we think they might not be speaking what they really think. You know, sometimes we are, that's an assumption. That, oh, he's not really, maybe he's not speaking what he thinks. Okay, maybe he's not, but I will still love it. Maybe he's not speaking what he thinks. That's his own problem. So it is his own problem that he's not speaking what he thinks, 
But from my side, I must still remain myself. I must still remain in love. I must still act by love. I still must love him anyway. I might not believe what he's saying. I don't have to believe what he's saying. I don't have to take what he's saying. I don't have to agree with his lies, but I still love him. But I still must love him. Most people think that we only receive people by their results. Sometimes we want to receive people just by their results. Yeah, who you are to me. Yeah, to. you are not my level. Yeah. Oh, that's another reason why we cannot love people. You don't have my result, my kind of result. You are not my level. Mm -hmm. But that's not Christianity. That's not love. That is not. Uh, that is not the nature of God. Yeah. We are not level with Jesus. At all. So, uh, Jesus left heaven and came to die for me, even though I'm not on his level. So I shouldn't treat people like that. that they are not on my level, so I cannot love them. And who knows the levels? You know, levels Only we, God we, will know. Because the most important level is that we are all in the level of the nature of God. The image and likeness of God. If you are made in the image of God, I don't have the right not to accept you. Because if I don't accept you and you are in the image of God, it means you carry God and I don't accept you. It means I reject God. If you are made in the image and likeness of God, if I don't accept you, I don't accept God. So I cannot accept God. I cannot receive God if I don't receive you. I cannot love God if I don't love you. We are not taking this too serious, what you're saying right now. We are not really mean that there is God in people. It's yeah, people okay. don't believe it. We are don't, they don't when, take it when serious. We see, when we see, you know, the reversal, let's yeah, say. Yeah, the weaknesses. Weaknesses. We say, okay, there is no God there. <laughs> there can't be God there. There can't be God no, there. No, 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 no. Even... Uh, God, even in yeah. the worst, even in the worst of people, God is there. Only you have to learn to look beyond the dirt, the evil. They just covered in evil, but the image, the original image, is still God, in the likeness of God. And God said it was good. So the good part of well, God's part is still there. So. That's how we should love people, not because they've done something good or wrong. So, most people think that we only receive people by their results. So, if you want to receive people by their results, then you are never going to walk in love. Because what we read earlier on says, if we say we love God and we hate his brother, so you cannot love God and hate people. No. No. It is only how you relate to people that decides how you relate to God. And the Bible says, if they don't have my results, see what the Bible says. The past that we think are less honorable must be treated with more honor. People who have less results must get more honor. People who don't have any honor must be, get, must, the ones that are weaker, they are the ones to be respected the more. Romans 13, 10. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment, fulfill, fulfillment of the law. So love to neighbor is the most important part of law or part of Christianity or part of religion. Love to neighbor. To do good. Love is the desire to pleasure another. To do good to another. To make others feel good. So love does not do anything wrong or harm to the neighbor. So what is love then? So love only does good or looks to do good to another person. That is love. The, uh, the desire, the strong desire to want to do good to others, to want to bring pleasure to others. So love, that is the essence of the law. That is the essence of the Bible. So are you willing to do good to others, everybody? Especially people who don't have that good, who are not feeling good, who don't have it, who, who need it. So the reason, the, the meaning of love is a willingness, a desire, a strong desire and passion to pleasure others. To make people feel good. 
So love could be just holding you like this. Anything that will make you feel good, give you pleasure, give you, make you feel accepted, loved, valued. That's what love. So love is not just money. Love is not just between husband and wife. Love is not just family. Love is not even church. Love is that desire to bring pleasure to others, to want to make others feel good. The strong desire to pleasure others. To pleasure the whole world. That's what love is. So, love does no harm, but it's only one to pleasure. That is the essence of religion. So religion is all about love. Law is all about love. Hence, day two others, people will love, day two, oh no, no, sorry. Hence, day two, two relate to others and rate them only by their results and abilities. People think like that. That people only by their results and ability. No, that's not love. If you want, if love is the ability or willingness to pleasure others, you don't look at the results or ability anymore. You want to pleasure them. That's love. You just want to love them. Romans 13, 8 says, Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. You see? If you can love, you have fulfilled the law. You have, you have met all God's condition. If you can just love, what is love? The willingness, the the desire to pleasure others. If you live your life like that, willingness, the, the, the energy, the, uh, the zeal, the enthusiasm, the passion to bring pleasure to others, that is love. If you can have like that, if you can live like that, then you have fulfilled all the laws. You don't have problems anymore. But the truth is that we should bring people to our Okay, to our side by love. Romans 6 24 says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So, what's talking about here that if you are faith, if you only want to love yourself, you know, there is a dangerous teaching right now, a dangerous teaching in Christianity. People say, just love yourself. If you don't love yourself, you cannot love people. You see, that's not what the Bible says. Love people nevertheless. Love God and love people. If you love God, you will love people. And if you just want to love yourself, then you cannot love yourself and love another person. But some people say, okay, but do you have to love others? Ask yourself. Yeah, but emphasis should be on others, not yourself. Otherwise, you just be egocentric. So if you just want to love yourself, then you cannot really love others. To really love others, you must think about them first, not about yourself first. That's just the truth. No one is worse than others in normal relationship. So no matter who I am, I should look at the world and that nobody is worse than me. Did I tell you to find some videos? Two videos? Let's show that. We'll get ready to show them. First John 4 12 said, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love has been perfected in us. You see? No one has seen God. But if you love God, if you love others, you love God. And if no one has seen God at any time, but if you love other people, God comes to live in you. And his love has been perfected in you. God comes to live in people who love. We invite people to, okay, because, right. First John 2.10, he who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in it, you see. Love is the most important thing we could ever do. Everybody, okay, let's see some videos, please. Thank you. Let's see some videos here.
Now, this man, there, this is a ja uh, okay, no, no, let it be, let it be. This is a Chinese guy who has his own job. He has his own job and he's going to work every day. This is not his job, but you see him saving somebody from committing suicide. Let it play, let it play. He's saving somebody from committing suicide. And because he has seen, just like in Nigeria, where people have jumped into the river, so he knows that from this bridge, people want to jump into the river. Or oh, see, somebody just jumped. So this man, in his uh, after work period, he goes to always be on duty and help people want to jump from the river and goes to talk to them and save them. He has been able to save, rescue 300 people from suicide that way. 300 people. And you know what he did? He went to use his money to rent an apartment. So he will save them from here. Then sometimes some of them will... They don't want to die so much that they attack him. You see, can we see the picture again? You see, they attack him. They want to kill him. They beat him. The people, sorry, yeah. The people we want to save are the ones who attack him and beat him like this. Because the people want to die so much. But fear, you remember what I said. Fear is the one thing that stops us from manifesting God from living in love. So if this man has considered the incidents and the attacks against him, you could have said, what's my business? Uh, it's not my business now, so let them do anything they want to do. If they want to die, let them die. But he will not allow this to hamper him and to stop him, and that's why he has been able to save 300 people from death. And apart from that, he used his own money to go and get an apartment, a house in town. He's just a normal worker. He's not, he's not a rich guy. He works eight hours every day. But after work, he still goes to look and for people and talk to them. And then he went and got psychologists who begin to give people consultation with his own help. And then all those other people are using, you know, they are free, free of charge to give consultation. He gets an apartment with his own money. This is what love is. But fear is one thing that would have stopped them from doing it. Okay. Uh, next one. So that what I'm trying to say is that why is it that we don't love people? Why is it that we find it difficult to love people? Like several reasons. One of them, one of the most important one is fear. Fear. We think that uh, the people with this stuff, you know, love makes us vulnerable. We think love makes us to be weak. Love makes us to be vulnerable. Yes, it was attacked. You could be vulnerable for some time, but at the end of the day. When you don't relent in love, when you don't stop loving, when you don't give up in living by the spirit of love and truth, you discover that that principle itself will save you, will rescue you, and will glorify you. That man was later glorified to the extent that he became a hero, national hero, and the most important person in the city and in the country that has been rewarded. Love and truth will always reward you. Just love people. Don't have second thoughts. Don't be looking back. Just love people and live by the truth. Love will see you through at the end of the day. Let's look at another very moving one here.
just a bag of good weather. Good weather. Nothing could be more important than love. Let's learn to love. Let's learn to love people. Let's learn to live a life of love. Nothing is as good as that. Well, I would like to, for you people to call. If you would like to call, I will probably show a testimony from our church. Let me show a testimony from our church. And then you could call after that. So you'll be welcome to call in after this video. So for you to call, go to... Uh, Facebook Messenger, Facebook Messenger, Move Agents. Look for the word Move Agents, one word. Move Agents, Move Agents, Magic is written in front of it. Just one word, Move Agents, uh, on Facebook Messenger. Not Facebook, but Facebook Messenger. Okay? Let's have a look at Embassy of God. The thing is that in Germany, where they move to, the government is even paying them to do this kind of social work. Most of you people from Western countries, the government is interested for people to deal with these kind of issues. But here, we have to raise the money ourselves. We have to find money. We have to do business to get money and then to use it to go and save people. But they are going to the, they are in Western Europe and the government is paying them salary, giving them open door to be able to deliver people from drug addicts. But here in Ukraine, this this movement, just one lady, Natalia, started the movement and she moved away. She went to Germany and she put a pastor, an assistant, she put an assistant through this one organization, over 5,000 drug addicts have been set free. Still, the government is pretending not to notice it and still attacking us as a church. But in, all, in Western countries, where you, most of you have advantage, they can encourage you. But here, they are still attacking us and we're doing all this for our money. So, difficulties is no issue. If you have the love for people, you can always overcome every kind of difficulty and go for it. The matter here, but the government would have asked Christian that. Yakashu wrote, Pastor, the solution is for your visit to play, right? So, the Kwanosa is going to let? Four years. He came to Shasta. I am the Prime Minister of the Social Democracy. He came to? He was a drug addict for six years. Six years? Yes, he was in prison. He came to? I am now working with the youth. Лидеры молодежи. Вы кем были? Мама и наркоман? Да, мама наркоман. Кем стали лидером общественного движения? Лидер общественного движения. А вы? Был наркоманом, употреблял наркотики 4 года. Сейчас являюсь студентом Киевского национального университета театра, кино и телевидения. Учусь на телережиссера и тоже служу молодежи. Был наркоманом, сейчас руководитель школы диджитов. Сколько лет был? Три года. И теперь что? Мы создали промо-группу, через которую хотим выйти в клубную сферу, создали школу диджеев и сейчас школу продюсеров создаем. Ты это лидер этого движения? Да. Меня зовут Александр, я оказался около пяти лет, мы с Пашей занимаемся диджеингом, и я также учусь в университете имени Тараса. Локэмбил. Семь лет употреблял наркотики, сейчас занимаюсь бизнесом. Ты бизнесмен? Да. Женой? Клуба, ты миллионеров. 
שלהם כלום במשתה של מיליוני ערב. יש דו שיהיה דו של נרקומני, שים לב נרקוטיקי, אינטפלסט על מיליוני ערב. לאס ואדני שודה בושה. אני חושב שזה שלנו כלום במיליוני ערב. אני חושב שזה שלנו כלום במיליוני ערב. אני חושב שזה שלנו כלום במיליוני ערב. בפשי זה מזבל, יש לנו סקוק על אלף תלוס, שש לב. איתפל מיליונר זה סקלוב, שינוי, לא? דאמה. כתוב אישי אותם, איס קלוב. איס קלוב, ריבטה, איס ביזנסמנון, דאס ביזנסמנון. 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 Just came to church and they are now becoming millionaires. What is stopping you from becoming somebody in this kingdom? People who are totally destroyed. They didn't finish school. They couldn't go to school. They couldn't read. They couldn't do anything. They are becoming this thing. How much does she pay them? I think can be. Who patrimed the narcotics in more than 15 years? Now he is the Soviet president of the Federation of Football of the City of Kiev. This kingdom, at least set of Amira, this is not from this world. Every one of them, a director of a center, or a pastor, or a leader, or a millionaire, or every one of them, just think the other day, where drug addicts are. This is not coming from this world. This is not real, but it's real. Nobody is nothing. Everybody is somebody. Everybody is a world changer. Everybody is a revolutionary. Everybody is a deliverer. Everybody. This is just one man. You come, husband and wife. One guy was almost dying, let's say nine years ago, came here, got saved in this church, was empowered and impacted, became a deliverer. We were sent forth to pastor a church. Can you imagine? These are just people that God saved and, and you know, rehabilitated just through him alone. These are all the people who just came. This is another group. It's like the whole country is getting rehabilitated. <laughs> and all these people, the same story. You wait till you say the same story. We have so much potential in the church. If the church begins to do what Jesus asks us to do, we will win the whole world just like that. Easy. Can you imagine every church doing this? Все, я буду только вопрос задавать. Когда пришел в церковь? 13 лет назад. Кем пришел? Наркоманом. Меня вели под руки, самостоятельно не мог ходить. Микрофон. Кем была? Наркоманом. Пастором. 18 церквей в регионе Крым. Это как бишоп. He's now a bishop over a whole region, a whole state. Here, Chief Bob, come and meet what you do this with her. She's leading one of the most influential organizations in our own country. In the, yeah, in the whole state. She's the most influential person. Yeah. По специальности я педагог и кандидат психологических наук, но к великому сожалению беда не обошла мой дом и я мама бывшего наркомана. Even though she says she was a lecturer at the university, holding a PhD, but her son became a drug addict. That's what brought her to, brought her to God. So then she became a deliverer to those kind of people, and that started an organization for such parents and such families. Сегодня на. Now you have two policemen. Policemen who became drug addicts in police uh, service. Now they have to come to church to get delivered. And now they are businessmen, they are millionaires, and they are delivering other people as well. Just in three years. Church to kill Pastor Sunday for bringing his family to Jesus. He was a mafia boss. He was a godfather in the mafia. And he said, for Sunday to have tampered with my family, I'm going to kill him. But on the way, he got a heart attack. I had to be rushed to the hospital, and then that's where I came, our members came, prayed for him, and God saved. God arrested his heart, and that was his journey to salvation. Look at who God is choosing, because the good ones, they are not available. We are too good for God's use. We are too good that we love our shares more than his heart. 
So God will lift the goods and will raise up the stones. Yeah, that is just a demonstration. You give your life. Dedicate your life to serving him, to making a difference in the world. That's what it's all about. Not about my success, not about becoming anybody, but about bringing his kingdom to the ends of the earth. I know everybody, I think, uh, can you go back to the other, the, the, one, you know, the previous one, the first one that you played? Anyway, do we, do we have some callers? Okay, hello? Hello? Yes. Who is this, please? Hello, my name is Blessing Stephen. I'm calling from London. Yes, Blessing. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good, thank you. I just want to say a big, big thank you for what you've done to me. You have no idea. I don't. I Let's don't tell, me about, tell me about it. I was crying, you know. I was so much... I was so emotional. When? You know, I I trusted somebody and I gave the person, I know to some people, 2,300 pounds is nothing. Yeah. But to me, it's a lot of money. I gave this person money to sort out some things for me and the person took my money, blocked me off, and I said to myself, I was so bitter. But when I saw you laughing after people have duped you, they've taken so much money from you, yeah. and you're still laughing. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm going to let go. And the minute I made that decision, I just had this peace in my heart. Wow. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Blessing, <laughs> right? Say big thank you. Your name is Blessing. Yes, blessing Stephen. I live in London. Are you planning to come to Ukraine anytime in future? Yeah, I have a visit to Nigeria. Well, when I when I come back from Nigeria, I intend um, uh, coming with my son um, because I have yeah, I want him to just learn these things because I've lost so much in my life. You know, thinking I'm a Christian. Because I, I just wanted that. I just wanted you to know that if you could forgive and love. You know, if you come to Ukraine, I could talk to you more about this sometime. But or if I meet you, I agree to talk to you. But it's not a big deal for God to recompense you many, many times over. So just let yes, go. Yes, I just, I just love that. I mean, look at you smiling. Look at the huge amount that people have taken off you. You are smiling, and there I am crying, and I was so upset over two thousand three hundred pounds. I wanted to, even I had headache. I was, I was so ill because of two thousand three hundred pounds. And look at you smiling and laughing, and you know just taking it easy. So I said to myself, "Hang on, blessing, don't kill yourself. Just relax." And the minute I made that decision. I'm wow. so sorry. Wow. I, I just had this peace, this wow. peace, peace, wow. peace in my heart. You know, thank you so much for all you do. And secondly, I, I just, um, since I started listening, this was um, just in November. Yeah. Um, I had an appointment with the, uh, with the dentist. So when I went to the dentist, he now told me that I needed um, some antibiotics. I said, okay, that's fine. I took the prescription to Booth's chemist. When I got to Booth's chemist, something said to me, I don't know what it was. I said, I said to the pharmacist, what's that medication for? And she said to me, oh, it's um, for diabetes. I said, uh-uh, I don't have diabetes. Wow. I need antibiotics. Wow. And you know what she said to me? Oh, you have to sue. You have to, you make so much money, blessing. Uh, let me take a picture of the, that prescription. Let me just say, no, thank you. Can I have my prescription back, please? And she looked at me. Wow. He said, it's not that I'm rich or I have this money. I mean, this is me crying over 2,300 pounds. So I said, no, just give me the, um, the thingy, um, the uh, prescription. So I took it back to the uh, dentist and he found it. I said, no, you calm down. Just write the right 
prescription for me to take back. So um, I went back, but you said, because there was one teaching, you you made, you said something a couple of, I think less than a week ago, you said that even when people do things to us that are wrong, we should forgive, but, you know, like the lady that um, uh, someone killed the daughter or the son, yeah. and she forgave the person, yeah. yeah. So I said, if that person can do that, I mean, this is just... A, a medication error. I didn't die. I wasn't. Nothing happened to me. So why should I destroy somebody else's career? And this dentist is just a 37 year old black guy that has just made it. Why should I destroy his career? So I just, I just took it with a pinch of salt. But I still told him. I took him to a corner. I said, I mentioned his name. I said, Listen, you made a mistake. He said, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, That's okay. Next time, please make sure you don't do that again. He looked at me and I walked away and I didn't take it off at all because what's the point? I cannot destroy somebody's career because of medication error. You know, thank you so much because if I didn't listen to you, maybe I would have, you know, done something or acted um, the wrong way. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Brilliant. You to you, Brilliant. To the team, to everyone, thank you. Greater destiny awaiting you, my dear. Amen. Yeah, so it's, Amen. you know, just keep on abiding by the principle of love and trust. Yes. It's going to be all right. Blessings, Amen. my dear. Bye. Amen. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Okay, I think we have more callers here. So let's uh, see what other people want to contribute. Here we go. So whoever this person is, the next one. We are expecting contribution on love. Hello. Hello. Hello, Apostle Paul. God bless you, sir. Bless you, God sir. God bless you, DSA. We did hear you now. Yes, DSA. Uh, DSA, you you were sharing me something. You know, I was listening. You were talking about the Titan because that was where my, I was really focused on that. The reason why the apostles were collecting money, you know, was because they wanted the people who were, you know, the, 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 the poor among them, people who were, who needed it among them, so there would be no lack because the, the, the foundation of the church, the Bible says the, the disciples or the apostles, everyone who was a member of the church at that time, they brought all that they had together so that they could what? They could have that. There would be no lack among them. But today, sir, mainly there's a lot of lack of, TSA, a <laughs> lot of lack in the body of Christ, especially in most churches. A lot of lack because there are people who are suffering, who don't have money to pay their house rent, who are sick, but they all come, they still collect the little they have from them. And TSA, I want to just establish something that the Lord personally told me. I, I fear God to lie. Because tithing came before the law. Yeah. The first person who gave tithe was Abraham. And Abraham precedes Moses. Now, Titan was given to Melchizedek. Who was Melchizedek? He was like a stranger. Abraham did not know him as his brother or his pastor or his uncle or whatever. And I was so I'm so happy because why? If you if people study Melchizedek, they will discover that Melchizedek, they called him the king of Salem. Salem means peace. Means he was the king of peace. He had no beginning nor end. That's his genealogy. He had no father, he had no mother. He was a Melchizedek was a prototype of Christ. And now, when we talk about Melchizedek being a prototype of Christ, we now understand that even the tree of life in the garden was Christ. The rock that they drank water from when the children of Israel left Egypt was Christ. The rod Moses used to part the Red Sea was Christ. The manna that fell from heaven that the children of Israel ate was Christ. The man that appeared before Joshua and said, Joshua, I am the captain. You can't go and take over the city without me was Christ. But at the end of it all, in the book of Hebrews, they opened our eyes to understand that this Melchizedek that was spoken of before, that had no beginning or end of this, is in the order of Christ. It means that Melchizedek is in Christ, is Christ himself. It means that if Melchizedek is Christ, that means Christ is in people because he lives in people. The Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. For what? Christ now dwells in human beings or in people's body, not in physical buildings, means that tithe should be given to Christ. Now, how should tithe be given to Christ? It means that in Deuteronomy 26, 12, where it says, the tithe, you know, should be done once in three years, not every month. Yeah. 
once in three years. And this is for widows, orphans, less than the strangers, the Levites, it was well spelled out. Means these are the vulnerable ones, the ones who are in need. Means that Christ lives in the, among the poor. He said, He that gave it to the poor lended to God. God, is, Jesus said, that He's the father of the fatherless. He says, The husband to the widows. So if I give to a widow, I am giving to Christ in her. If I give to the orphans, I'm giving to Christ in them, the Melchizedek in them. If I give to the, to the Levite, I'm giving to the Christ in them, which is the Melchizedek in them. That is why Jesus is going to stand on that day and say, when I was hungry, yes, you have shared this thing every time, several times, and people still can't catch it. Anyway, it is written that they will have eyes they cannot see, they can't understand. So these are deep things of God, because deep call it unto deep. So thank you so much for what you are sharing, and let it keep spreading. Let it keep spreading. God bless you, GSA. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your teachings of love. We'll right. keep giving the love. We'll keep giving to the less privileged people because they are the ones where Christ lives in. So like on that day, Jesus, you said, I was hungry, you gave me food. I was in prison, you visited me. I was in hospital, you came. I was in this, you. And you said, where were you? Where? He said, don't you know whatsoever you do the least of this world? Because I am Melchizedek. I am the Christ in them. And you gave to me. God bless beautiful, you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Okay, I think we have another caller here. All right, so who is calling? Let's hear other people's contribution. Hello? 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 Yes. Oh, hello, DSA. Yep, is that Miles? Yeah, Miles, it's Miles here. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, uh, well done, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay, yes, sir. I didn't uh, start the message on time. I, I stayed awake throughout the night, so I woke up uh, quite not too long ago. Yes, uh, I, I think I missed the part on what the last caller was uh, speaking about. It. She said you, you spoke on tithing. Yeah, but you uh, but, you tell us what you are calling for. Okay, yes, uh, I I really like the the the, the aspect where you're talking about love and truth, especially when it has to do with uh, the, the 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 social work aspect of it. Yeah, you know, I I just I just like to uh, maybe tell some stories about what uh, happens uh, here in our uh, mm -hmm. Nigerian community. Uh, it's, uh, you know, when we come here, we kind of, we Nigeria, especially Africans, we kind of, we're on the lower, the chances of, of us getting jobs are usually low. So we always start with uh, stuff like mental health job or factory jobs. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so then we, if you are doing a, a kind of mental health job or looking after the intellectual disabled, the, I think members of the church I used to go to them, they were looking down on you. I was like, so now then I used to think it was uh, it was the norm, the norm, but now I realize it is even the best job to do because um, the people, this, uh, people in the community here, they don't even want to go for that kind of job. So people that go for those kind of jobs are mostly migrants. So um, now what I did was when I came in as a student, I I started doing it, doing that kind of job, and people, were, no matter what they were saying, I just kept doing it. God kept saying I should stay in the job. And somehow I got uh, to a level where I even got a, a, a bigger job where I was getting paid more than uh, most of these people that were criticizing the job. Wow. And I was able to get my uh, get uh, our residency through the job. And then they started telling other members or new people coming to the country to go and do the job and get their residency. So the mentality is still not towards love, but towards what they can gain. Yeah. Which is... Uh, yeah, which is not too good. So for I, I still work in the same field, and it's actually you know the, the area where I work in now is called forensics. You know the people who have been you know most people who commit murder, who kill people, you can relate it to mental health. So, so instead of sending them to jail or the, or, or, or killing or sending them to to, to having the, their life or to ending their lives, they send them to us where we have to look for ways to fix them and rehabilitate them. Yeah. So um, there's this very case that I was thinking about when uh, you were teaching about this girl. 
she she came to us about two days ago she she this girl has a master's in mathematics or something like that and she went to one of these ivy league schools in america uh, so, and then she came and i don't know i don't uh, she's new so i don't really know what her index or prime is but you could see that you know this is somebody who is a researcher somebody who's at top at the university level and she was just gone mentally unstable and she had uh, she had a lot of lacerations on her body she had butchered herself you know i was like is this a human being she had even stabbed herself like if this two spots where she stabbed herself, stabbed herself in the stomach you could see things coming out things uh, body fluid i was like and she's still alive she's just in her early 30s you know i was like this is a human being you know somebody that we thought was out there who's on top and look at how look at is this just this is what we are, this is all of us, all of us have all these things coming out of our body, you know. So I was like, you know, being there alone, we want to easily call it sick, but we have to be there sometimes, even though we are being paid, we have to establish that law because she's got hepatitis C or something and she's spitting at us, she's, um, you know, she, she's kicking at us, insulting us, she's being racist. But if you can't mix love with that kind of job, I don't think one can easily be there. So uh, this your your message has also uh, given me the privilege to apply love to the kind of job I do. And also I also like to comment on, um, I, I listened to a, the later version of your message yesterday. That's the one you did yesterday because I came back late from work. So I, I didn't, uh, I, so when you were, you, you were saying um, that uh, you let your wife go and um, do what she likes to do, so that she, she doesn't, you don't have to force her to work or something like that. You were making yes. a statement on that. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. yes. So I really like that. And um, it, in fact, it has been an issue in, in my own family. You know, my, you know, I discovered that anything I, you know, yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't an issue in my own family, but I think uh, I try, my wife wants to work. Sometimes she, when she used to stay home, she says she always complains, I'm bored, I'm bored. I said, like, if you want the job, go and work. And even though the uh, living expenses here is quite high, I still don't let her pay, contribute to the rent and everything. She just pays for the children's uh, daycare and all the stuff. But what I want to say here is that, uh, I think what what is lacking in my own home is uh, what we call the, she, she always come and say she's not happy. Especially regarding uh, when I say I'm no more going to church again, that I've discovered a bigger truth somewhere else. So I now was listening to, I saw a video, I came across a video on, on Facebook yesterday about Will Smith saying that, that he has retired from trying to make his wife happy. And I tried, I, I kind of related that video to what you, you tried to explain to us. He said he, he has decided that he would just go out there, his wife also will go out there and try to become achievers in their purpose, in their line of purpose, you know, and then they can come back and meet in love in that spot called relationship you know in that way they don't he doesn't have to try hard to make her, his wife laugh or try hard to make his wife happy and stuff and i really i don't know if you if you related to uh, your teaching on what you're trying to say yes, uh, yes. yesterday <laughs> yes uh, and then uh, i also related to the video you showed today about the chinese man who went to was giving out things, and then he, you could see how happy he was when he saw that the people were, that he was helping were, were actually becoming so happy. You know, so I really, I really like that. And then the DSC, uh, there was something you said uh, yesterday about people going out and they, they, when they go, that or people who have uh, who are in a relationship and they try to make it 50-50 contribution. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My comment on that is that was this. Um, I think that is the kind of culture, especially here. When I first came, I was single, and then uh, I think I was looking for when I was looking for a wife. I think when I go out with some of them and I try to uh, go out with some women, surely the white women here, I try to pay when we go out, but they look at me in an awkward way. I was like, that is not what is done. That is not the culture here. So eventually, I had to say this maybe perhaps is the culture here, but it's something I didn't really get uh, used to and uh, eventually I ended up going to marry a Nigerian which I know that this is the way I do my things mm -hmm. so it's just to, I don't I don't know what you have to say on that but I feel that maybe that is the culture that the western world has uh, adapted okay and uh, yeah I think so <laughs> I think you are right 
Yes. Uh, okay. I was also going to ask um, when that because I had a, a very sad experience at work recently. Uh, one, the wife of my manager just got cancer, and within a week, they said it's terminal and that she was going to die in uh, in three. And I, so it's a very sad time at work for for us. And then I was like, I kept thinking, I was like, when does miracle actually come out of love? But the story you shared today on the video, the, one of the videos about you know, the church, uh, Embassy of God, where the policeman was coming to give you a hard time, and then he got a heart attack and he went to the hospital, and then people, members of the church, the same church he was coming to attack, prayed for him, and he, <laughs> you know, he actually recovered. That answered it all, you know, that actually miracle could act, can come, always can always come out of love. And Beautiful. Maybe you could uh, enlighten us on that if if there's still, if there's time on in the love series because okay. I really I really like to know how miracle can relate to love. Too. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Uh, and then I'll end, up, I'll end with a story in one of the former churches I used to attend. How one of the pastors treated this brother. He he came to he came from Nigeria to New Zealand to study, and he you know when you come new like that, it's usually very hard to settle. Sometimes to get an apartment to live in is difficult, you know, because you don't have any record in the country. So, and this is a pastor who has a modern who has a lot of houses in uh, Auckland, and then. Gave out one of his gave out one of his rooms to this uh, young man, and you know sometimes things are, are, are kind of some, sometimes things uh, quarrels will happen. But when some uh, when this stuff happened, you know it, uh, this, the pastor just went on put it on Facebook and said that no African should give this guy uh, a chance to live with him or her. That uh, he he has got the, 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 the this African brother had gone about spreading bad. It's about them that he's not feeding well in the house. He doesn't that he he's just he's just a that he's just a nuisance to them and stuff. So he that what she actually did was that he killed the guy's uh, prospects of even uh, being trusted among fellow Africans. So it's not that that is not the kind of love that uh, we are actually learning on this platform. And I, I really want to thank you, JSA, for opening our eyes. Thank Beautiful. you so so much. Beautiful, sir. Thank you so yes, much. Sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We still have more callers. Hello? Okay, so please check on the books. You see in the books over there. Check on the books, especially the ones on love. The law of difference. Hello? 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 Yes, who is calling, please? This is Abidemi from I, America. We can't hear you. It's like you are speaking from a, from a distance. Oh, can you hear me now? Not very well. Speak into oh. the microphone, into the speaker. Okay, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, sir. Yeah, it's better now. It's good. Oh, okay. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much, Pastor Olorua. Yes. I did like it. Yes, sir. Uh, there is God every time. And I want to tell you this. For the good teaching of love and the truth that you are giving to us. Yes, sir. And it's uh, where there is love, there is peace. And where there is peace, there is God. And where there is God, there is no need. Hmm. I want to tell you one thing. I called last time. I think I sent you a message. But I need to share this about love that you are teaching us with this so-called prophet of God, the bishop, the geo. They only know for themselves and they don't know for nobody. Hmm. There was a pastor. There is a pastor in, uh, in Jacksonville, in Florida. The man went to Nigeria. He's a proficient pastor in Redeemed Christian Church of God. Okay. He went to Nigeria and he had an accident. He is now a brain damage. He was staying in Nigeria and nobody couldn't help him. They have to fly him back to America. And the man is right there now. Blood is draining from his head to his nose every day. And Redeem is looking for $250,000. They, they, they cannot give this money to this man to do the operation. And he was, was, 
And he was a regional pastor. He's a, he's a, he's a professional pastor, one of the, the big pastors. And the man is running around. Nobody, they send the messages to the, to, 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 to the members to come and contribute for this man. And it's very sudden. It's very, very sudden. I cry every day because it's person that I know personally. When I spoke to you, you told me, if not because of what you are going through, you will take care of this man. Yes. And that's why the living God is continuing to bless you, to bless your family, to break, to bless every member. This is sudden. If we can write a jet, if we can write a brand new car, if we can build a house, if we can do everything, and the man is dying. And nobody can do anything. Nobody. I call the man. The man sit down there. He's a prayer warrior. You always pray. He's a very, 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 if you look at the man, he's just almost your lookalike. But nobody can do anything. They're sending me emails to the members. You want to tell me they cannot do that? Wow. It's very but, but in the redeemed... Is it the law? Is it the same redeem where the geo can call for one billion dollars? Yeah, the same redeem. The man went to Nigeria and his car ran under the trailer. It's bleeding. The man bleeding every day from brain to nose. And from maybe to, brain to the nose. Maybe the geo doesn't know. And things like that will happen, Pastor. Things like that will happen in Redeemed Christian Church of God, and they won't know. But they're circulating. They are circulating the, 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 how to collect money. It's very sudden. How to collect money. So, Gio must know. No, I know that if Gio just make, if G, if Gio just make one announcement, that money will be no, found. The only thing they do is to, is to create a church. It's to, it's to plant churches. They get the money to plant church. To plant church. Even though Gio, the, the, the Gio is coming. Listen to this. Gio is coming to, uh, to Boston, March 23. Every time they stay on the altar to announce that they collect the money. Even though before they even speak the word of God. Oh, God is above heaven. God is going to judge. God is going to judge. God is going to arise. Pastor DSA, keep doing the good work. The Lord will continue to bless you. You know the first thing you told me when I told you that story? Yes. You told me if not because of your situation, you will arise. Yes. And you will not fall. You will not fall. You have reached your goal. You will not fall in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please help me to pray for this man. For you know, God to revive him. To revive him, to revive his family. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody. Anybody can hear it. His name is Dabsayon. Dabpo. Ogushino. If anybody can help him. He is based in Florida, eh? He is based in Florida. Jackson Field. That that for Ogushino, but he changed his name to Dab Sion. I have his number as a friend of mine. We always call him. You know? So it's because the 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 medics the medicine in America, the hospital are not taking enough because there is no money, eh? Yeah, because there is no money. There is no money. I asked one of the pastors the other day when I was in uh, when I was in Michigan. The man was telling me that, oh, thank God for little American uh, Medicaid or something like that. But I told him, I said, sir, so you want to tell me that redeem cannot take care of this man? They need 250,000 US dollars to take care of this man. And this man was a leader in America. For he's the, a leader. For he's, the dean. he's a proficient pastor. His name is Dapo. Ogushina, you can Google it. You can Google it. They don't care for nobody. They only care for themselves. They only build house schools in Ifewara. Even though when they sit down in the camp in redeem, you will see how dusty the place is. And they sit on the like like every place. There is God do. You know, let, let me tell you what is happening. For this is an amount this is an amount of money that I personally can see grandly pay. But my accounts, like because of the court case that is going, 
is under blockage, so I cannot release really take anything from me. I, That's I the only person. I know you can even though for what you said the day I called you, the way I sent a message to you, what you said to me relieved me. That's why I told you where there is love, there is peace, where there is peace, there is God, and where there is God, there is no need. Keep on doing the good work, Pastor. But That's is there, you, no, you wait, you, you wait, know, wait, 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 bro, wait. Is there any limit? Yes. Do they have any time limit? Because if they will pray, maybe if you who can pray for me, maybe if my something will be over before the end of this year or before summer, maybe I we can still make it to help the guy. But you know, uh, I, I, is there I, any limit that he needs to he must do the operation between one time and the other? I, I hope so. I will speak to his wife. I will speak to his wife again and I'll ask ask her what is going on. Actually, we want to go there to go and see him, you know. The man is bleeding from, from the brain to the nose all the time. They call it hemorrhage or whatever. Hemorrhage, it. hemorrhage, yes. Yes. I was I, I cry every day. When I see you standing in front of white people, not even black people, you stood right there talking, giving testimonies. But the only testimony they give is about selling 13 ounces, come and give me one. Somebody who, who went and have IVF, and they have kid, and they does the only thing they can do to slap people. Even though Pastor Yedipo, he, he, he claimed that somebody, that he can raise dead people. Somebody died in the swimming pool, a student died in his, his school swimming pool. He cannot even do anything for that, for that little boy. But they will come on TV. Look at the thing that you are showing. All the drug addicts. All the people. I'm, so, I'm sorry I'm yelling, sir. Because this is the way my force. I'm, I'm, I'm bitter. Yes. I was a Muslim for 10 years, for, for, for 42 years. Even though Muslim people will not do this. Yes. Many people will die in America. Nobody will take care of them. But the Muslim, a member, a little member, they are nothing. And we gather only together to send them back to their own co respective country. No, because if 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 you have two thousand two thousand people only from redeemed to give hundred dollars each, and I know that even even not even two thousand how many you know just two thousand people or two two thousand five hundred people to give uh you know uh in fact to give ten dollars each or whatever it is or no hundred dollars well, each. Not do it, you know, sir, because redeemed they think they hold their members. They think they hold their members. They are afraid, and everything the, the scripture say, everything you do in fear is a sin. They are afraid, they can't even talk. I tell you one thing, Pastor. I told you before. But uh, that Baba Deboya is coming in in March. They call it a, a, a fire fell. Let the fire fall from heaven. I don't know which fire want to fall. They are already <laughs> advertising it. They even stop. They're collecting money. They're collecting their partners before they even give the word of God. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? They abandon Jesus. Only what they do is to, is to open the prayer with the name of Jesus. And after the end, we close in the name of Jesus. And in the beginning, they do their own business. Because it is so easy. Because I know that in America they have more than two thousand members, two thousand five hundred, hundred dollars oh, each. Many, many. You can mention it, sir. Hundred dollars each. In my own place, in my in, 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 in my parish, we have more than three hundred. They will not do that, sir. They will not do that. Even though for the evangelism, they will not do anything. They will not say nothing. But when Dio is coming, or when they want to do something for their home. You will see them, they stand on the pulpit and they start talking. Oh, I cannot leave my pulpit for nobody. I cannot do this. Oh, Mark. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord, we help us. Oh, Lord, we help us, Pastor. Lord, we help us. You know, you give me a real relief because that thing is in my heart. But when you said, ha, huh, if, if, I'm, if I'm in a position right now to do this, I know you, would, I, I know you can do it. You don't even have to. It's, but that's why the Lord relieves me. Easy, easy. They relieve me. They can. They have to send emails. If I can get one of those emails, I'll send it to you. Even 
you don't come out, come out open level. Come out open level, they are mad at it. They said they shouldn't post it on the, on, on, on the social media anymore because they don't make money on it. Everything is greed. 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 Just please, sir, in your power and the power of the living God, if you can continue to pray, his name is Dapur Ogunshino, Dapsayon. All the people on this wall, I apply to you that you pray for him. He will not die in vain. In Jesus' in name. name. Jesus. Amen. Thank you. We'll be, we'll be remembering him in prayer. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank sir. You, and sir. happy belated birthday to your lovely queen. Thank you, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you, yeah. sir. Yeah. What a sad story. What a sad story. That is so sad. Do, are people not important in the in these churches anymore? I mean, I thought church is for people. Why should they be gathering money for building and they cannot gather money for people? I don't understand that logic. How can you gather money for people? I mean, for building, for brick. And you will not gather money for human beings. I don't understand something. Hello? Good evening, dear sir. Yes, Sister Tola. Yes, sir. From, yes, sir. Very nice, from sir. Germany. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good yes. evening, sir. Nice to hear from you. Yes, sir. I'm very weak now with the last caller. I'm very, very weak. Mm. Oh, Lord, help us. Yes, if there's anything we can do, even people online with ten dollars. Yes, yeah, everybody that is any, everybody that is listening now. If anybody, yes, I can't hold it. If God yes. is touching anybody, at least hundred, hundred dollars. If anybody can just give hundred dollars, we have two hundred people right now on this platform right now. If anybody can yes. afford hundred dollars, eh, just write it on the something. I just need you to write that I am in for donation and tell us how much you can donate. If you can donate only less than hundred dollars, say. If you can donate more than hundred dollars, say. If we can gather the two hundred people that are here now, if all of us can donate hundred dollars each, we will cover that thing. Only we have to, we, 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 will, we will later arrange how to donate it. But if we can just say that I am in, if everybody can just type that, yes, I am ready to donate the thing, we will donate it right now. Some people are already typing that I can donate $200, $200. A lot of people are already saying they are in. If we could do $100 yes, so or $200 do it. each, right do it. now, we will save that man's life. Right now. Let everybody, that, let everybody that is online right now begin to write their name and how much they are ready to, get, to, to gather. Please, please write your name. I mean, your name is already there on the Facebook. Just write the amount. Just write the amount that you can, you can give in. Just say, I am in for this amount. I am in for at least $100. If we can all do $100 each, we will save this man's life. If we all can do $100 each, we will save this man. Please, anybody that is ready, just say, I am in. I am in for this amount. I'm in for $100. If we can do it, we will get in touch with you later on. And we will get in touch with you through your Facebook messenger through your inbox yes. but just yes. tell us that you are in at least for hundred dollars if you know of course the more money anybody can give the better if anybody can give more than hundred dollars it's even better but at least hundred dollars so that we will show love so that we don't just criticize we don't just criticize redeem or any other person but we will show how this thing should be done so that we will really show real love in action Anybody that can do hundred dollars because they need that two hundred and fifty thousand, and for two hundred and fifty thousand, we need two fifty people who we give hundred dollars each. If you don't want to write right now on the because right now you can just be writing it on the comment section. Just write at least if you don't want to write the amount, just write that you are in. Just say I am in on the comment section. Then you can write me on my Facebook. You know this this Facebook that you are saying now that is. That is broadcasting now. You can also write me personally and say you are in for this amount or what amount you can give. So we just need 250 people to give to, to suggest that amount. And then we will find a way of uh, of gathering the money. You know, we will get in touch with we will talk with uh Akinwale, the guy that called, and then we will we will see how we can uh, we can do it. 
So if we could have God bless you, dear sir. Yeah, thank you so much, my uh, God bless my you. We we are we are going to we are going to show them that we are in for the real love, the love of Christ. This will be possible before the end of this month. Amen. The money will be gathered by the grace of God. Amen. And the operation will be successful. Amen. And the, this person will call in and testify to the goodness of God and testify to what love can bring about in this group. We are going to bake it by the grace of God. Amen. Thank you, DSA. Thank you. I'm short of words at the moment. And um, the teaching today is another uh, wonderful one in the sense that sometimes ago when the Lord told me, you know, to move from my church to another church. One of the things that pains me so much was the fact that I was, was there was a time God gave me the body to be taking care of the children. And I was asking myself, what will happen to the children? How will they cope and all that? And that really started my heart. But I thank God I wasn't angry or feel so bad about it, but I felt a little bit upset. But in the midst of it all, I let go. I didn't hold on to the grudges or to the attack that I got from there. And I started a new church. They said, you won't believe, four months later, I was just sitting down in the service. And the person that's supposed to take care of the children was going to the church and just, you know, touched me on the shoulder and said, and just said to me, oh, would you like to come along and see how the children's church looks like? And, you know, I went with them. And after that, they were just amoring and, you know, muttering that I should join them to, you know, take care of the children. Then I knew that, God, is this how you work? I was thinking that, you know, this desire has gone. Hello, dear say? Yes, we are hearing you. Yeah, the call, you know, this call upon the call of God upon my life is already, you know, gone. But I give God the glory that, you know, God, all we need to do is just not hold on to grudges or hatred. Concerning any situation we find ourselves, whether in the church, even when they, you know, pay us back in a way we do not expect it. Just like just like what you said that people are owing you and all that. And you know, we should not hold on to any enmity in any way. We should just hold on to Christ and the love of Christ for everyone that comes across our way. God bless you, dear Thank you, Father. Please, we are, I encourage everyone on the platform, whatsoever you have, please, let's let's go for it. We can make it. We can make it. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Tola. Uh, yeah. Tola. So, look, yes, look, everybody that is watching now, they said 200 is not enough. Or they said we need 250 people to give $100 each. So 250 people. Uh, some people are writing. Uh, some people are writing. Uh, some people are writing. Uh, amen, amen. I don't understand email. If amen means that you are in, just say that you are in. That you are in for the, or the hundred dollars or any amount you can. Let's save this man's life. I don't know him. Nobody knows him here. But you know, it, it could be me or you in that position tomorrow. If we can gather 200, 250 people can gather $100 each, then we'll make it. Oh, they said it's 2,500 we need. No, no. Is it 2,500? No, it's, it's, two, two, it's two, 250. 250 by $100 each can do it. Hello? Hello, good. Hello? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Who is calling, please, from where? Olufe Milatunji. From New York. Okay, Olu Femi from New York. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I reach in today and really appreciate you for the great work you're doing for God's kingdom. Thank you, sir. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful to God for the courage he has given you hmm. and the team working with you. I observe, I'm a pastor. I pastor in Lagos, Nigeria. Oh, okay. So I mean, Though I'm in um, the U.S. for a while, doing a program here, and but I, I see what you're doing, and I really hope that a lot of Nigerians will really tune in and learn from these things that you are exposing to to the whole world. There is, there is. In fact, I had to put up a post on my Facebook wall last week after listening to you. I had to write and say Christianity, as has been presented to you may not be Christianity as God intended. Oh. Because clearly the Christianity that has been presented to almost all of us in, in Africa <laughs> is certainly not Christianity as God intended it. But some people are, some people are fighting against this platform. Oh. No, anyone who fights against this platform is not 
is, is clearly not following the Holy Spirit. Wow. Because what you're saying is plain, it's open, and it's obvious, it's vivid. It's something we all see. It resonates with, it. I don't know, it resonates with, uh, with our day-to-day -day experience. No, but they say, they, they say because I mentioned, uh, uh, you know, people's name and show people's video of the big men. How else, how else, how else do we learn if anybody is going to be afraid? If yes. everyone wants to, wants to live in fear, then how do we go practically to see what we are discussing? Yeah. It, it, so I, I don't see anything wrong with that. It, it, should, it shouldn't be a problem to any Christian. Because if it I don't, be if, if I don't show... Are, your videos, you have... You have Literally, probably thousands of videos out there. Yes. They can also go and pick your videos and do anything they want to do with it. Yes. I yes. don't think you have said anybody should not. No. Yeah, constructive criticism is something the church has to embrace. Because I was telling them that if I talk now without any evidence, they will say, how do you know? It's not true. So of I needed course. to provide evidence. Yeah. I really, really, I really celebrate God for what you are doing, and it's a movement you have started, and as long as by the grace of God, you and your team continue, the movement will keep widening, and trust me, all these people we are talking about will either sit up, they will repent, and they will sit up. Amen. Yeah. I just want to thank you very much, sir, for what you're doing. Thank you, and sir. And I believe I'm, I'm part of those who will begin to also watch what I do in my own church, and make sure that what we are doing is in line with the will of God. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Sir. Yes, sir. Bye. Okay. The, the comments that I'm seeing here shows that uh, we need 2,500 people, eh? Ah, that's more than we have here. We only have 250 people online now. But we need 2,500 people to save that man's life. Anyway, you know what I think? We, sh we should just start our own. Let us start to do what we can do. Let us start, you know, our own part. Let us do our own part. So let's, let's do what we can do and see. Maybe other people will pick it up. Hello? Hello, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening. Can you talk? Can you talk? Can you, can you reduce the noise or go away from where the noise is? Okay. Thirty seconds. Okay. Fifteen seconds. Yes. Uh, hello. All right, sir. So, good evening, sir. Yes. Yes. I just want to comment on the uh, pastor in the U.S. Okay. Uh, I saw the letter that was posted around. Yes. By the organization asking people to donate money. Okay. And my first thought, because I donated on that platform, okay. to fund me, set up by the organization, and I wrote them a question. Have you paid for this money and you are trying to recover it? Or you are waiting for this money to be contributed? In four months, the entire organization has only donated 29600 In four months. So because I was thinking that they have donated the money, they have paid the money, they just want to recover it. But from what this man said, that means they have not paid the money at all. They are leaving the man to rot in the hospital, to be at the mercy of the people. And they have not taught their congregation enough to love, so they are not donating. Out of the parishes in U.S. and Canada, $250 each would have paid the entire fee without anybody looking for money. And they can get that in one Sunday. $250 each per parish. So, uh, these things they are doing, it is only God <laughs> that, can, that can answer them on it. So, what, so sad. what you are saying, brother, is what? that they don't even need to include members. Even parish alone can do it. That's it. They don't need members. $250 per parish, US and Canada, the money is paid. And they have more. They have more parishes than $250. No, no, no. Even, that is just 800 parishes, $250 each, pays off the money. And there are some parishes that can do more. This should. 
Hello? Hello? Okay, so it's a good thing that they have already GoFundMe. They already have GoFundMe. So if they already have GoFundMe, then uh, we will demand for that from uh, the brother that called. So we will get in touch with all of you that are worship that have registered that you want to help. So we will just give you the GoFundMe that those people are asking for. I mean that they have already opened, and uh, maybe after we do our own part, maybe God will touch somebody's as uh, God will you know God will touch somebody else's heart. And maybe the churches, maybe even the denomination, their heart will be touched. And they will also do like we are doing now. So, all the people who want to help, Hello. please write that you want to help. Oh, write right now in the comment section that you want to help. So, don't just say amen, amen. We don't know what amen means. If you want to help, just say, I want to contribute. I want to help too. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello, DSA. Adeshola, yes. Yeah, how are you doing, sir? Oh, no, no, wow, well, make you no ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry for asking. I know you're doing very well. Yes, I yes. know it's a, it's a tough evening. It's yes, very tough. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm actually calling because of this last uh, contribution that is coming in. I just want to get some things clarified. My husband and I, we are here. We're just trying to, like, get some things, you know, being cleared out here. Okay. So the total amount that is being needed is 250000 right? Yeah, that's what I understand, yeah. Yes, 250. So if we look at everybody on the platform, let's say 250, $100 each is not going to do it. Yeah. So I know some people can give more than that because okay. if we are going by $100, it's going to be 2500 No, no, so it's going to be, be 25000 Oh, uh, Sorry, sorry, 25000 Sorry, it's going to be 25000 so that is not going to do it. But I know some people can still do more than that. So what we want to know, I know you said you're going to give uh, an information later on on how you're going to give money, you know, because if it is going to be GoFundMe, uh, knowing how GoFundMe runs, I have handled GoFundMe before, uh, GoFundMe are still going to take their charge on any amount that comes in. So the total amount is not going to be two hundred two hundred and fifty thousand anymore. Yeah, but so, you know, you know, Adeshola, what is going to happen? They already opened GoFundMe. They already oh, have they it. Did? Yes, for this man, they already opened GoFundMe for him. Mm. And right mm. now, right now, they have only been able to gather twenty nine thousand uh, dollars, something almost thirty thousand mm. dollars. But that is go been going on for four months. Wow. That the wow. guy is dying. And the person who opened oh, wow. the, the people who opened the GoFundMe is the organization, I think. They redeemed. Mm. But mm. The, what, this is that what is they, this, yeah, this is what the caller said that why should you open GoFundMe and be telling people when for they four can months? Give the money instantly. Uh, give the money instantly and then maybe the, the, you will keep it later through Go, GoFundMe. Yeah. But what they have done, yeah. they are allowing the guy to die. Why money mm. is not coming in? So, DSA, how can we get the money as fast as possible? What, which account are we going to get the money to so that this money can get to this guy, not waiting for GoFundMe? Well, GoFundMe is already working. I think if that is more. That is the best way because GoFundMe will okay. register the name of the person, the amount of the person. Everything is clear, so nobody. So are you suggesting for us now to go and pay this money on GoFundMe? In the yes, because they already have it okay. existing for for the guys okay. in the guy's name. Okay. It's already okay. existing. Thirty thousand is already there almost. So it is okay. on his name. It is it is official. So okay. what we are so going to we do? We can post the name of the guy, so we can go to GoFundMe and hopefully they get the money going. For yes. Him. What we are going to do is that yeah. we are going to get in touch with the brother. The brother is going to get that GoFundMe, GoFundMe something. He's going to. Okay. Yes. So he's going to get that GoFundMe address, and we are going to send it in box to everybody individually who has said they want to contribute. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's the way we are all going right. to do it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go with that. Yeah. We're gonna. Go. I just said I'm, I should quickly call to clarify that. So. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Well, that seems to be the last call uh, that we have. 
That's the last color that we have right now. Okay, if the people who are asking that we should type the GoFundMe details, I don't have it now. We don't have that one now. But we are going to send the GoFundMe details to your inbox. Hello. 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 Yes, ma'am. Who is calling, please? Yeah, my, yes, sir. my name is Taiwo Ifesonya, sir. Mrs. Ifesonya, yes. How are you, ma'am? Yeah. Excuse, sir. Don't let us go. Okay. I think you have concluded that we should go through them. Because we don't know the Are guy. We, yeah, because we don't even know the person. You know the way GoFundMe works is that it's, it's not going to any individual. It's going to go to the man himself. I know. I know. I've done it before, sir. Uh -huh. I know. It's so, not the conclusion. Yes. Are you sure they're going to use it for him? Yes, because it's in the name of the man. Okay, sir. So let the man give us what we are supposed to do, sir. So what we are going to do here is we are going to, by the grace of God, today, tomorrow, we are going to get in touch with all of you who have, uh, you know, anybody who has said they want to help. We are going to inbox you in your email, inbox, in your okay. Facebook, Facebook inbox. Yeah. Yes, and we are going okay. to, yes, and we are going to send you the account number of that uh, GoFundMe for the man. Okay, that would be nice. Yes, ma'am. Thank ma you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Have a blessed day. Thank no, you. No problem. Blessings. Yes, we will get the GoFundMe details and we will put it and uh, and we are going to put it in your Facebook Messenger. We are going to use the Facebook Messenger to send you the, in, uh, the information. So right now, what we have to do first is to collect collate the uh the comments this comment that we have now we have to go through it and see all the people who say they are in and everybody that has said they are in they are the ones we are going to give the the account number to so if you want us to send the account number the gofundme number to you you have to write now on the comment or in the comment section that you are in then or you write me to my facebook page then we know that you are in then we'll be able to reply you okay guys thank you very much everybody have a wonderful evening god bless bye